Welcome to another video from the Heart Factory. So today's video is about the venous cannulae we use in cardiopulmonary bypass. So this video will talk everything in detail right from the basics, the design, the flow characteristics, how we choose a particular cannulae for a particular surgery and uh, what are the ways the cannulas are designed and on what principles the cannula will work with a short touch on the recent advances in venous cannula for cardiopulmonary bypass. At the end of this video or as a part two of this video, you will see the technique of using these cannulas across various situations, both in adult cardiac surgery, in minimal invasive surgery, both in adults and pediatrics and in redo surgery. I hope you all will like this video. So without wasting much time, let's get started with the video on the venous cannula part two of which will be technique of using these cannulas in various clinical scenarios. So in the cardiopulmonary bypass, so far we have seen that uh, oxygenated blood is returned to the patient. Now the venous blood is withdrawn from the patient. So the venous blood that comes through SVC and IVC into RA that has to be you know directed towards the uh, heart lung machine for getting oxygenated. So based on uh, the chamber, uh, if the chamber, this procedure wherein the chamber has to be opened or it is not required to open, the type of the cannula is being chosen. And again here, uh, we have to uh, select a size so that it will satisfy the, you know, uh, the uh, cardiac output flows from the pump that is uh, calculated based on uh, the BSA and cardiac index. And again, the same parameters works for this also. It should give, you know, lesser uh, pressure differential with maximal flows possible. And again, their tips are again uh, different. Here you can see a basket tipped one, a multi-hole here. And this is a bicable cannula. This is used in cases where the chamber has to be open. Say RA is open in ASD case or LA is open in MBR case. Such uh, cases we have to use two cannulas one put into SVC and one into IVC. The size of the SVC is uh, one third as uh, and the size of the uh, you know uh, IVC is two third out of the whole uh, venous uh, outflow that has to be withdrawn. And uh, again you have again why reinforce all such kind of you know uh, design things are over here in contrast with the you know the IoT cannula the IoT cannula where the uh, flow is being uh, propelled by the active forward flow from the pump mechanical pump while here the flow is based on the gravity siphonage for about 40 centimeter square you know pressure head where the flow is uh, you know is carried out due to the gravity and uh, the pressure differential is 40 centimeter what I mean to say is the height of this, uh, the heart and the you know venous reservoir where the blood is being collected, should be you know nearly 40 centimeter in height. And uh, again, uh, we have here this is two-stage venous cannula. This is also the same purpose, but here this is used in cases like aortic valve replacement, wherein this is being put into RA, and also this is used in you know CABG cases where the chambers are not open. In such cases, this particular, you know, cannulas. And this tip is uh, directed in the IVC and this particular second, we call it two stage. And this one's, uh, one which is here, this is uh, placed in the RA, which can collect the SVC blood. But this again, it will not withdraw the complete venous drainage because some of the blood can flow, you know, on the sides of it and uh, we should be aware of that and uh, wherever the RA manipulation or you know is there we should be aware and it is better always to choose a bigger cannula to avoid such kind of you know uh, you know disadvantage of that one and as regard with the cannulation Dr. Suresh will read. Now in cardiopulmonary bypass there is something called total cardiopulmonary bypass and partial CPB when you use when you selectively cannulate the SVC and IVC and then give the venous return to the perfusion team, if you snug the SVC and IVC, that becomes total CPB. What I meant to say is, 
all blood that is returning to the heart except that from the coronary sinus and the Thibetian system are given to the reservoir that is total cardiopulmonary bypass. Now how you do that? Now you see here this is a right angled metal tipped cannula for IVC or SVC. Now again you put it into the S show it here. Now you put it into the SVC and turn it around so that the line faces the head end for the ISVC, line faces the foot end for the IVC. Now once you put it and you allow the cannula to sit like that, it keeps on draining the venous blood to the, when it is connected to the circuit, through the tubing to the venous reservoir. The line says that the tip is, the line always is directed towards the tip number one. There's a white area which is both hemostatic it stops the cannula more getting into the lumen of the, the venous, either SVC or IVC. And they can use this to tie your snugger and thereby secure this cannula to the SVC or IVC. This is via reinforced, therefore no question of kinking. At the same time, you're not supposed to clamp this area. And then you can bring out this a bit longer because you're in the cavity, mediastinum, then it comes out and then you connect it to the uh, tubing that goes to the reservoir. So these are called the Pacifico type right angle metal tipped venous cannulas which have a side hole as well. Now if that again the size is chosen by the perfusion team based on the body surface area. In kids the SVC drains half of the um, uh, venous volume but as the patient or the child grows in adults the IVC drains two, two thirds of the body volume and the SVC contributes one third of the venous volume. So based on uh, the size of the patient and the etiology, the venous cannula are chosen. If you choose too big a cannula, then once the bypass is established, the side holes get stuck to the SVC or IVC and stop the drainage. So in the which case you may have to fill the heart a bit resulting in shuddering for example. And um, in which case the perfusion team has to either fill the patient or put a clamp so that the the side holes are released and allow drainage. So shuddering is a problem with venous drainage wherein it happens if you use too big a cannula in a smaller sized venous uh, um, chamber or if the patient is hypovolemic. The treatment of shuddering is put some clamp on the venous line, number one, but that will give more return or more uh, vent output. Second is fill the patient and reduce the flow a bit so you will be taking care of shuddering. So for the IVC and SVC the same design, the Pacific right angle cannula. Third cannula for SVC. Mm. And um, sometimes if there is a left SVC as Jana said, we use a third cannula as well. Especially in patients who have well formed SVC, IVC and left SVC, we can let all the three and connect all the three to the venous uh, system. Again that will give, once you snug all three, it gives total cardiopulmonary bypass. Now this type of venous cannulation is used for almost all surgeries except the aortic valve surgery and the surgery that is pump assisted CABG. For any other surgery wherein you need to enter a chamber, you always need bicaval cannulation, therefore total cardiopulmonary bypass. Now if situations, if you are not comfortable using a right angle cannula, you, the same work is done by the straight tip venous cannula, as you can see the basket tip. You can pass it through directly through the SVC or IVC or through the RA appendage into the SVC and IVC. This does the same work as this cannula. It is not right angle tip, it has a basket or the kind of flower tip. It drains blood through siphonage or gravity. It is wire reinforced with markings which tells you how much in you are in that particular vessel. There is no line here because you can put it whatever way you like. Unlike the right angle, there is no line. Again, you find it, this is longer because it has to be deeper in the mediastinal cavity, comes out and then connected to the venous line. So again, this is a cannula you can use for establishing either partial or total cardiopulmonary bypass. Now, when I say partial bypass, what is partial bypass is, if you're not draining the SVC IVC separately and not snugging it, then you are establishing a bypass that is called partial. Now, this is a two-stage cannula. What is two-stage? A cannula which drains both the IVC, the lower tip drains the IVC, 
the central tip drains the coronary sinus and the RA and SVC. So this single cannula, if directed towards the IVC, made to sit in the IVC, pass from the RA appendage, may make it this tip sit in the IVC so that the the other basket sucks the coronary sinus and SVC blood and RA blood. So this cannula is used in aortic valve surgery or any surgery where you don't need to open the chamber and even in CABG, one single cannula drains the whole venous system. But the problem here is it does not fully drain the patient of the venous blood. Some amount of venous blood drains directly into the RV, some drain directly into the RA through the TV sin system. So uh, we can't snug the SVC or IVC with this type of cannula. So whenever you use a two stage, one stage is to drain the IVC and lower body, the second one to drain the upper body coronary sinus. So you can't snug the SVC IVC. Such type of cannulation always gives us to partial CPB and um, this is used when you don't want to open the chamber. And again, as you see, the cannula is gradually tapering down but gets bigger as you go up. Wire reinforced, there are markings on the uh, cannula which tells you ideally where the cannula should be on the RA appendage. But more often than not, based on the size of the patient and the surgeon feeling and the surgeon feeling the IVC tape, one has to place the uh, can like the RA appendage and secure it so that you get good venous return with the use of this single cannula. So this is two-stage venous cannula. Similarly, if we are using femoral artery and femoral vessels for establishing cardiopulmonary bypass, we have the femoral venous cannula. Now you can imagine with the advent of minimal invasive cardiac surgery, there's a lot of femoral interventions happening. Now this is a femoral venous cannula. Now this is a two-stage cannula rather, we will come to the first single stage. So this is a femoral venous cannula, again you can use it on a guide wire like a Seldinger technique or you can you directly pass it into the femoral vein under vision so that the tip lies in the IVC just below the its entrance into the RA. Now if you see this, can I open this, there are a lot of side holes here. So it drains a lot of venous blood, keeps draining through this across this long tubing which is wire reinforced, can't kink it and this comes out and you connect it to the venous line. So again drainage here happens by gravity, it's long because you need to pass it through the groin up to the um, RA junction, this will not enter the RA and you can confirm it by TE. If the venous drainage is not sufficient, when you use this femoral cannula, you can use a separate SVC uh, vein uh, cannula, the SVC as well, there by establishing good venous flow. Now they are marking on this, on this if you can zoom, you know, it says 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters. Now based on the height of the patient, you will know how good the venous, the can, how far the cannula is inside the patient and accordingly you can secure it to the groin allowing good return of the venous flow into the system. Now uh, there is something called with again for minimal invasive cardiac surgery the same femoral venous cannula we have two stage now this is a single stage this you cannot pass across the RA or rather you can pass it if you're not opening the chamber but ideally this has to be there in the IVC so that the lower part of the body is drained. But in minimal invasive surgery, there is something called a two-stage venous cannula. Put it in Again, you have a stillet which pass it in inside, which which can be just passed through the femoral vein, gently insert into the femoral vein, and then that, then gently pass the cannula up. Now this is designed in such a way. This tip has to be in SVC. Come down, and then you see some holes here. This has to be in the IVC. Now this segment will lie across in the right atrium. The tip should be in SVC confirmed on transesophageal echo which is a must. This will be draining the IVC and other part of the lower part of the body. It is wire reinforced throughout its length to the outside. This single cannula is sufficient to drain the whole SVC, IVC and RA and specially used for minimal invasive surgeries. 
the crux here is you may have to use some vacuum to get good venous drainage or you may have to use a roller pump that is called kinetic assist venous drainage or vacuum assist venous drainage with this single cannula to get a good return can also be used for VSD sorry ASD surgery as well when you loop the SVC and IVC through the thorax so this is a two-stage venous cannula this is for the lower part of the body this is for the IVC why are reinforced there's a markings on all there it will tell you how long you how much inside you are this tip has to be in the SVC and to be confirmed by TEE anything more on this Jana? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, if required, you have to uh, use vacuum where you can apply a vacuum of uh, 60 millimeters of mercury. 60, is it? Yeah, mm. 60. And uh, uh, vacuum assist uh, venous range, what we call as. Sometimes uh, a roller pump can also be attached, that is called kinetic assist venous drainage. So, in venous drainage, there are two types vacuum assist venous drainage, kinetic assist venous drainage. There is also called a three stage venous cannula marketed by various firms. The metronic one is called the MC2X. It's usually meant for uh, use by peripheral cannulation and the venous drainage is augmented by vacuum or kinetic assist devices. Now we also know the venous return is affected by the volume of uh, blood in the patient, the height of the patient from the reservoir level, the negative pressure exerted by the gravity which is usually minus 30 millimeters of mercury, placement of the cannula whether it is central or peripheral, the size of the cannula, the use of CPB tubing. Now what happens if the venous return is not good? The end organ perfusion is not that great, there will be excessive hemodilution and there will be flooding of the operative field when the venous return is not good. So what actually happens is there will be more blood in the field, we use more suction and the more hemolysis which leads to systemic inflammatory reaction and the inflammatory cascade is augmented. Therefore, a new cannula which can change shape within the body and give excellent venous drainage is devised called the self-expanding venous cannula which comes in a collapsed state and expands to the size of the May vein which is supposed to be placed and gives excellent drainage. It can expand up to 36 French and usually comes in 18 French in the collapsed state and said to give excellent drainage because of its thin and open wall which allows even collaterals to be drained as well. Has a cross-sectional area which is twice that of a normal venous cannula and its placement can be at a remote location from a smaller vein as well to get greater venous return. Now the flow requirement of any patient on cardiopulmonary bypass is based on the volume load state of the patient, whether it is a high output or low output state. Naturally, pregnancy is a high output state, so you need to make a lot of changes to the flow requirement. And any condition that requires higher flows, one has to pay attention to the use of cannulae in these situations. Now, just to wrap up, venous drainage is based on the routine use of gravity. So that is the height of the patient to the reservoir level. You can augment it by vacuum, which is max of minus 60, I guess, or use of a roller pump, which is called kinetic assisted. And if you use this augmented venous drainage, you should also be knowing that it can cause hemolysis, can cause vein wall collapse, it can aspirate air. One has to be careful if there is a PFO PFO is always a problem and uh, because of routine use of intraop TE, one can always make sure whether there is PFO or not. So if there is a PFO, using total cardiopulmonary bypass would be more useful or if there is a PFO, bicaval cannulation can be more useful. Coming to the complications of venous drainage, the first is atrial arrhythmias because you are handling the RA appendage or the SVC area. There will always be some fall in pressure when you are taking the IVC first things, especially with the heart full. So it's better to take on the IVC once going on partial bypass with SVC cannulae or RA cannulae. You can get bleeding from the very thin walled right atrium or the SVC or IVC sites. You can malposition the venous cannula. If it's a SVC cannula, you can put it into the RA. Or if it's an IVC cannula with the ASD, you can put it in the LA. And if you open the RA with these situations, you can have massive air locks with distension of the heart. 
So this is also one of the cause for low venous return apart from the table height, hypovolemia, small cannulae and the kinks in the cannulae. So one has to pay a lot of attention to the actual positioning of the cannulae, especially in ASD with IVC cannulation. Make sure that your cannula is not in the left atrium. Always make sure that the marker is directed towards the foot end of the patient and you are draining venous blood, not arterial blood. When the IVC can lies put in patients with the ASD, lest you will land up in having a massive A law. Therefore, the constraints to venous drainage would be the level of the venous reservoir. Actually, it is the upper level of the blood in the venous reservoir that is of matter. The tubing should always be fluid filled before you go on bypass, lest you have a large air lock and less venous drainage. And whenever you have air lock, you just make sure that the, the lock is passed down to allow blood to pass. So if you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Please don't forget to leave some comments for all of us to learn. Also don't forget to click the bell just to be notified of my next video in time. Meanwhile, keep watching this space for more interesting videos in future. Thanks for watching. Thank you.